Welcome to the first episode of Talk Less, Listen More, where we dig and dive into issues that are plaguing our community. I'm your host, Coach Tina. And I'm your co-host, Coach T. And today we are talking about um, being raised in single-parent homes or in double-parent homes or being raised by a grandparent or just someone else in the family. And myself and my sister here, we were raised in a single parent home. Um, now, she was raised with a, a father and a mother at the beginning of, up until you were what? Probably like seven or eight. Probably like seven or eight. But my entire life, I was raised with just my mom. So we have some special guests here with us today. And then we're going to dig in and dive. So I'm going to let them go ahead and introduce themselves. I'm Sherelle George. I'm a social worker slash therapist in Calhoun County. I was raised by my grandmother. Okay, my name's Cliff Edwards. I'm the CEO of Black Rhino Fitness. I'm also a life coach as well. Um, I was raised in a single parent home. My name is Dolores Michelle Peters. I am also known as Dolores the Pastor's Daughter. I'm an international best-selling author of The Pastor's Daughter, as well as a coach. I help women to uh, heal from spiritual abuse and toxic relationships. I grew up with both of my parents, and both of my parents were pastors. All right, well, let's just dive right in. What we did was um, we kind of wrote down what pros and cons we had, um, you know, growing up in either single parent, double parent, or, you know, being raised by a grandparent. So I'm going to let you go ahead and read the first one. All right. So the first pro is um, I received true love from a woman, which in turn allowed my understanding of why a man should respect a woman. So uh, whose quote was that? <laughs> 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 Sorry, me dog. You want to by yourself today. I know, but I appreciate uh, you. Just to speak on that, um, <laughs> growing up in a single parent home with my mother um, was a blessing for me. It was a pro because it taught me the value of understanding how to be a leader inside of a home and what a woman is going to expect and how to respect a woman as well. So, so did you, did you? Would you say that since you uh, didn't have the male there? Did that play a part, or does that play a part, or like in in that, or you just all, only took it from the woman's perspective? Uh, well, most of uh, most of my life, it's just been my mom, uh, aunties of mine, great aunts, great grandmothers, grandmothers. I've always been impacted by a woman of mm -hmm. some caliber, um, and so for me, it has helped me just value. Uh, a woman's perspective about what she needs uh, and then in turn it just makes me understand from a masculine standpoint how to uh, articulate and put that into a home. Okay I'm going to read a con which is uh, this one's actually mine and it says missing out on special times with a dad meaning daddy daughter dance or him buying your first car just special things that you know like my friends got to go to daddy daughter dances mm -hmm. or my friends like literally like my dad's picking me up today. Things mm -hmm. like that. I feel like are con because you long for those things. You know what I'm saying? And the Bible says you shouldn't want what other people have, but because I was missing it, I was wanting those things. And I feel like, you know, my dad not being there put me in that position to want what other people had. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that, I don't think it's fair. I don't know. What do y'all think? I think that's interesting because um, I had, you know, my father in my life and I would say that I missed out on those things too, <laughs> you know, and I okay. had them. So, um, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting that we ha that we talk about these dynamics because even though the, the setup, you know, is, is different among all of us, our experience, you know, is, is the thing that really like impacts us you know, throughout our lives. So you missed it because you didn't have it. I missed it mm -hmm. and I had it. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it's a different way to look at it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not a lot of exposure with males on how to manage a home. Oh, yeah. I keep getting your way. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what I meant by that is um, it's kind of like what she was saying. Um, you don't 
you don't have something and you see somebody with it. <clears throat> and so from my perspective as a young man, I played sports uh, and I would always have my friends' fathers cheering them on, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and that was really rough mentally for me because you got to play the game and then you have to witness uh, your friends, uh, males that are hanging on the fence and telling them keep going and keep going. And then from the, from afar, I hear my mom screaming my name, you know? Yeah. Um, and it was like, uh, it was hurtful. It really was for me. It was super, super hurtful because I wanted to feel that, that love from a, a male as well. <clears throat> and, uh, so lack of exposure to, um, somebody pouring into me <clears throat> that was, um, uh, a male really, really did some damage to me, but it also built something in me as well because the things that we don't have, um, we learn to value them once we obtain them. And so I was able to be blessed with um, male uh, role models in my life. One is my bishop uh, who taught me a lot about family, uh, the dynamic of a family, what a male is supposed to be inside of a family. And I just took those pieces of information, uh, men teaching me how to hunt and fish and the value of it, and not just hunting for the kill, but hunting to take care of. Um, and then the sacrifice that the, the animal had to make in order to make sure that your belly and your children's belly are full. So understanding those things from other people made me get a different perspective from different cultures. Mm -hmm. So uh, it wasn't just I got experience from the black male culture, but I got it from everywhere. Yeah. And so it made me and had become a more diverse man. Mm -hmm. um, and so even though it's a con, it still turned out to be a pro for me. So would you say like they were like, were you in like any programs that got you that exposure to be around other males that could be role models? Or was that something that you think just fell out of the sky? You know, God blessed you with that for you. Like if somebody was growing up like that right now and they're listening to what, you, what you're saying, like what type of group should they be looking for or, or should they be able to like get into it, in order to? It was a little bit of both. It was, of course, I was doing organized sports. So you're going to interact with different types of men. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a lot of it came from different types of jobs that I, I had as a young kid. Um, and so it just, it was an encompass of me having these things be a blessing to me and then also um, forcing myself because I was inside of different organizations. So uh, to any young man, I would say uh, tie yourself up, tie yourself up into groups where uh, you feel like it's a team um, and you can learn a valuable lesson behind that. So what you're saying is like you pretty much had the community. Absolutely. Uh, and which more like what old people used to say, like the village. Right. Do you feel like we have that at this day and time? I think we do. I think we just, our young children uh, don't know how to accept it. Yeah. I think that's what it is. I think we, we still have those type of, uh, people in our community, I think they just, these, uh, this generation of kids are just not accepting of it mm -hmm. because uh, lack of maybe love or some of the, some of the issues that we're talking about today, um, they just don't know how to take it in. And, and that's I think, understandable. I, was, I think also it's with adults as well. We don't know how to approach these children. These children are not how we grew up. Yeah. And I think in order for us to be successful in any kind of relationship or in it being a healthy relationship, we have to meet that individual where they are. So I can give you some of what is working for me. You give me some of what's working for you. Because I'm telling you, just having like a preteen right now, the issues she's facing, mm -hmm. I never even saw till I got to college. Yeah. So I'm just like mind blown because her mind is not even at a stage of a development for her to really even understand this is what this is right. and this is what we don't do it. I mean, I can preach it all day, but I'm her mom, of course. Her friends are like, this is cool, and this is what I want to do. It's a whole different type of peer pressure, I feel like. I just, I don't think we saw that growing up. And maybe even with us coming from households, I feel like, that were supportive and different in dynamics. I don't think there was not a time that I couldn't go to your mom and feel comfortable enough to talk to right. her about something. 
and it be safe with that person Correct. and yeah. not be judgmental. Correct. Right. Yeah. I, I just don't think these kids have that. And I really don't think us as adults are willing to even meet them kind of where they're at. But because we want to approach them from the old school method. What you got to look at is that the kids that you're talking about now, we're the adults. Yeah. yeah. You see what I'm saying? So it starts with us. Yeah. You know? I mean, I don't have kids. I got a little bunch of little, you know, I'm, I'm a life coach, but I don't have kids. But I'm saying, yeah. I have little kids. I have little, my little mini kids. You, They know who they are. You know what I mean? And, like, I try to, like, give them the best advice that I can. But that's only so far because, I, you know, I don't see them far in between. Mm-hmm. Like, they still got to go home to their parents. So it's really on the parents. You know, and that's something that needs to be talked about. Like, it's not just the kids are bad and they're not listening. It's different. We all had the same thing growing up, right? They're just getting exposed to it faster, Faster. right? So what are the parents going to do about that? Yeah, I definitely think that the millennial uh, generation has become really laxed on traditional um, discipline because, you know, know, with my kids... I raised my kids like my mama raised me, okay? <laughs> you come up in here, you're going to get popped. Now, I'm going to tell you once, and the second time, you're going to get popped. And most people be like, well, why you hit them? <laughs> well, because I told them once. They got a fair warning. They need to understand consequences. They need to understand consequences. You know, both my kids know, I'm going to give you a look sometimes. <clears throat> my mama didn't play that. Sometimes you got to look and slap. <laughs> At the same you know what I'm saying? Right. At the same time. <laughs> and I feel like... You know, the millennial generation, we have become lax in that way to where we don't even discipline our kids. So then when people, people or other friends may feel like they can't discipline the way that old school did. Because I would tell you, I had a bunch of cousins and mamas and aunties that would straight up get me if they saw me cutting up. But I don't think that people are able to do that in our generation. Correct. And our village came from love. Our village, I feel like now sometimes, like I even have to catch myself because I'm... You can whoop your kids. I'm saying that as a social worker. You can whoop your kids. You can't beat them. That's a difference. Right. There's yeah. a huge, a huge difference. difference. Yeah. So I think now some parents, especially with my stuff, like I have to catch myself. Like if I raise my voice or something and then somebody over here looking, then somebody over here recording. Next thing I know, DHR at my door. When there's kids really being abused, like you just don't have a supportive village no more that really backs. Like, no, this is what it is. I'm the mom of you, the child. And it, it's there not a, that anymore. There is a huge difference between disciplining in love and disciplining in hate. Absolutely. And, you know, from my experience, you know, I had a I had a father who was abusive. He was a pastor, you know, and so on the outside, it looked like, you know, everything was all good. He was, you know, a good man and he was, you know, doing everything he was supposed to do. But behind closed doors, you know, it was a totally different thing. And so I think, you know, when you say our you know, that our generation, you know, experienced, like, discipline with love, you know, that wasn't always the case. I mean, my own definitely went disciplined with love. Yeah, Deborah kids know. Was, she, she killed me a few times. I know she <laughs> It wasn't, and, but the thing is, I think also then our generation also, like, we didn't speak about this until we got adults. I know I didn't. That's true. I didn't heal yeah, from my childhood happened. trauma until I Hell, got I didn't know that was wrong until I got to college. You feel me? Hey. I didn't know shit was wrong with me. I thought I was just I shit. thought everybody was like this. Yeah. No, and then you I'm emotional. Like, you crying right. all the time. You got right. angry issues. I didn't know where shit was coming from. I just, you know, I was always taught what happened here, stay here. And I thought everybody <laughs> That's like that. true. That's true. And that was not the case. My it is mom not correct. was very private in that way. What goes on in this house stays in this house. You know what I'm saying? Which I don't feel like we were abused. Now I was did not we abused. Get, I was not abused. We were not abused. <laughs> but did we get whoopings? Yes, that you we got your ass toe up. We weren't gonna do that shit again. Right. Yes. You right. But I'm see, saying? the thing about that is the way Mama disciplined me was when I got to college. I was in my mind like, okay, everybody's gonna go somewhere, right? And they be like, you going? And in my head, I'm like, is my mama going? Nah, no, I ain't going to go. go. I ain't right. going to go. So I respect and love the ass whoopings that I got. I'm not going to lie. Like, I wasn't yeah. even that really really that bad. But I know sometimes, you know, I deserve the ass mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I respect it more. Because yeah. it, it taught me to not get in trouble because I didn't want to feel that rough. Yeah. And I think that's what's missing. I think like a lot of parents nowadays are trying to be their kids' friends. Mm-hmm. And that's the yeah. problem. Like you cannot be their friend like ever. 
Like yeah. to this I day, I'm still scared of my mom. Correcting, right? You know, it's like you know how when you when you know you're driving a car and you find yourself like veering off, and then you know person overcorrects where they you know turn the wheel really hard, and then you know that's gonna make you flip. It could, you know, yeah, you lose control. And I think that that's where we are as far as like the discipline, you know, that it comes when it comes to. Um, your children because we you know we had a system where it was a lot of abuse going on mm-hmm. and then when that you know was brought to the awareness then we overcorrected and mm-hmm. so now it's like now we're trying to be friends right. and you know you know we're just, right. like we don't want to touch them at all you know right and I it's, and it's like there's no balance like we got to right. keep it you know keep right. it in in the in the middle of the road so to speak you know and it's just it's no balance right now yeah i i, I definitely got balance <laughs> Yeah. I I mean I ain't gonna say balance. I straight up do my kids like my mom did me because it works. You know what I'm saying? It, it does. Works. I have a son. It results, baby. You know what I'm saying? And I have a daughter, but he's 12. And if I were to try to baby him, mm-hmm. he would not last at all. There's kids that are his age that are already, you know what I'm saying? Probably having mental health issues, having to see a counselor or doing drugs. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like, you know. But that's just that's just me. I'm just one person. But if we all were doing it, I feel like there could be a change in that in that yeah. aspect, you know. So And I think also sometimes your kids do things that are completely against your parenting. They sometimes they just gotta sometimes they, they gotta do. learn on their own. Like yeah. I mean, I'm a very firm I can teach you everything. And that's why I'm I'm very I say all the time to my kids, if you ever get yourself in some trouble, yes, I will have your back. I'm here to support you. But understand it won't be because of my parenting as to why you did that. So because you knew right from wrong. It goes back to what I was saying earlier. Like, we do have those resources in our community mm-hmm. that says that these kids can receive these things. But these kids are not accepting of mm-hmm. it. But then the reason why they're not accepting of it, and y'all just spoke about it, is because... So this stuff is really, really deep. The reason why they're... They're not accepting of it is because they don't know how to mm-hmm. accept it yeah. because they don't have structure inside of a home. And like one thing that uh, I firmly believe is that there needs to be both parents involved in their children's life, regardless if you can make it in a relationship or not. I think that the value of your child or children seeing both parents co-parent and co-parent is, is not if me and her, if we're together I parent one way, she parents right. one way. Right. If we are in two separate homes and the the benefits are making sure this child has mm-hmm. what he or she needs, we are both supposed to make sure that what she or he needs is the ultimate prize, not what she can do to irritate me, to make me feel like I'm less of a father or mm-hmm me irritate her and make her feel like she's not doing her part as a mother Mm. that's not co-parenting but that's what we deal with in our society today Mm -hmm. and instead of us saying you know what we didn't make it but our child can or our children can and and in turn what does that do it allows this child to manipulate so then they learn how to manipulate at a very early Mm -hmm. age because Mm -hmm. grown-ups have taught them how to manipulate. Mm-hmm. You in in your quiet place teaches your little boy or little girl, oh, your daddy is X, Y, and Z. Or then you mm-hmm. are in turn saying slick stuff behind the mother's back. Maybe it's to a new woman that you have and you're thinking that you're saying it in private, but then this kid hears it, they hear overhear everything. it, right? Mm-hmm. And then so in turn, they're learning like, oh, daddy don't really care too much for mama. Oh, mama don't care. Oh, I got this. I know who to manipulate when I need what. Mm-hmm. And so when when you have a community that's trying to wrap their arms around them, they're not going to listen to it. Why? Because they don't even have correct structure inside their own home. Mm-hmm. That's really true. That's, that's true. true. That's I true. Good point. And I think I can just say that from speaking of my older two children, their fathers are not present in their lives, but I made it very clear in my court order agreement, even though you choose not to be a parent and you don't want to be there for them at any given moment, no matter how much money you owe me, how much I don't like you, you still have access to your child. Absolutely. And I never speak ill to my kids about them. If they ask questions and I have answers, I'll give it to them, but it'll never be answers on how I feel. Absolutely. And I think that's what I didn't have considering I was raised by my grandmother. She told me 
all these things about my parents. And then I grow up and all I know is bad stuff about them. Mm -hmm. And then I try to give them the benefit of the doubt, but I still know all this bad stuff. But then they show me all the bad stuff still. So then I'm like, okay, well, she was right. So, so, now I got a question for you. so that's different for how I'm doing my children. While your dads are not present, I don't speak ill about them. That's I'm true. never going to say anything nasty that's about true. them. You want to get to know them? That's amazing. Call them. I mean, I have, that's just not where I'm going to do. I don't want what, however their minds feel and form an opinion about their fathers it'll be based off of them right. not how i personally feel and their father should be chasing after them they shouldn't be chasing Just, after and, them. and that because definitely it's, it's doesn't an, it's a, it is an obligation right. for a man to make sure because these children did not ask to be here absolutely right. and not. here's my thing if you allow the dad to have the say so or whatever and when okay say the dad comes back and he wants to be in their lives i still want to let them be in their lives because you've already shown that you are not capable of being in their lives so don't i, I really don't think that you should allow that to be like, I'm just being real with you. But that's based up, off of a right? personal experience. I know, but not just personal. I mean, this is everyday life. Like, there's too many. Like, that's showing them in and out. Or oh, you could just no, leave. No, that's not. And then no, you come no. back. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's how I look at it. Kids are not that's, open that's door. They're not revolving doors here. Like, you have to have consistency. So, what I'm saying is, I'm not going to tell you, no, you can't ever see your child because I don't like you. That's what okay, I'm saying. Okay. But if you ever, the, the order literally states, I need a two-week notice. And we need to be able to have some boundaries. <laughs> I need to know where they going. I need to know you. Like, you just can't pick up the phone one day and say you want to be a parent. Like, it just doesn't work that way. So, that's a you great put that in your paperwork. That's and I voluntarily put that in my paperwork. And while, <laughs> and while neither one of them paid their child support, and I don't necessarily fight it, I mean, karma, the government, whoever can do whatever they want to them. My children are blessed and highly favored, and their mama's going to work. <laughs> but I'm not working. Like, I just treat child support like it's the lottery. Maybe one day I'll get it. I just don't know. <laughs> but oh, wow. I just feel like my kids, like, they're going to be okay without you. And thank God I have an amazing husband that came at such an early age and has been a great father figure for them. I still know that they long for that relationship. Right. Like yeah. It broke my heart. Like last year, finally, was the third year in a row, my son, as one of his birthday gifts, he asked for his dad to be present. Just mm. present. Mm. So finally, me, I was just like, you know what? I'm going to just, I hired this private investigator. Let me just go find your phone number. <laughs> so I get the phone number, call him to tell him, hey, this sure, is what sure. it is. So you, Reese is really asking for you. So Reese talks to him maybe 10 minutes and never heard from him again. And ever since then, he's never asked anything never asked else. Again. But it was never based off of what I told him. Yeah. He had to see that for himself. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. their little their little minds, man, we sometimes think, regardless if they're five, six, mm-hmm. ten, twelve, sixteen, their little minds can wrap their heads Absolutely. around them. Right. And they understand what true love is. So if they see their mother mm-hmm. is always there, uh, they have a father figure in their life, they have an example of what it is, and then they needed to see what it's not. And it, right. it just so happened to come from their biological father, which is sad, but they understand. And so it might make them a, a much much stronger person. It would, by, and, and so then I catch that. it on the flip side because my husband has two kids. And while I've done everything to not overstep my boundaries, try to support someone, that structure and that home environment is not what we're saying it should be a co-parenting. It's more of like we're going to manipulate the situation. We'll call you when we want something. Yeah. We'll try to do this. So it's the confusion, and, and it makes me sit back and it's like, Dang, like, that's all my kids wanted somebody just to show up. And you got that, right. and you acting like this. Like, can we grow up? But that takes, I think, the adult to be able to figure out, this isn't about me. Yep. It's about the kids. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to uh, all this noise in the background. Some of the kids is mad. Okay, I'm going to read a pro. Helps me to navigate how not to parent. Help me to learn how to be present for my children. And I, I that was you. me, yeah. for sure. So by my parents not being there for me, I feel like I missed out both aspects. While I didn't get the father-daughter dance, I didn't get the dad to walk me out on homecoming, I also didn't get, like, the motherly side of it either. Like... Mm. I didn't have my mom to show me and tell me this is what you don't allow boys to do to you. This is what you don't do. All I got was everything from my grandmother telling me what my parents did and how you you can't be like that. You just can't be like that. So 
in a sense, like I felt like it was almost like a reverse psychology. Like it wasn't like she told me anything good about them. So as a person, one, growing up in Cleveland County as a biracial female, being raised by a white grandparent, I really didn't know who I was. Like, I felt like I didn't know if I was white. I didn't know if I was black. Like, I had friends of both, but it was still like, I just didn't know who I was. And I still, like, I don't think until I got outside of college was I able to really figure out, like, both sides of who I am. Mm -hmm. So I think that it was just key for me with my parenting is I want my kids while they know, they know their mom going to ride for them. They know that. Right or wrong, I ain't gonna condone you wrong, but I'm gonna ride for you and I'm here yeah, for you. And I'm supportive. Like, my door is always open, but at the end of the day, I'm still your mother. I'm not your friend. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's, that's just where I think it was interesting that you that you said you didn't know like who you were, mm -hmm. you know? Crazy, and it's, man. yeah, and it's like, yeah. you know, our kids that and all of us, you know, we our identity is wrapped yeah. up in how we were raised and who we grew yeah. up with and how, mm -hmm. you know, and all of that. And so it's just a real interesting dynamic. I think it's very dangerous, really, for a person to not know who they are. Yeah. You know? And that just leads you down a path of really trying to discover. And more than likely, you're going to, you know, find out the hard way. You Do know? you feel but like that sense. happened to you? That you had trouble and you, you maybe I think I things? had some trouble. And I think the way, if I would have had some sort of parenting, not like a grandparent um, I think I would have made some different choices for sure. But I think the difference when I can look at it between me and versus my sibling, while one took a higher road and tried to really heal and grow mm -hmm. and ultimately that's became my ministry is now I can help other families that are in the same scenarios as I was mm -hmm. versus someone who kind of continued the cycle. Mm -hmm. So I think, I mean, I, I know who I am now, but I didn't know at that time. And I don't think I really discovered that because I always felt like, I'm not white enough, but I'm not black enough. But I don't even know who these people are to even tell me who I was. I mean, it was just always a constant struggle on who you are. Mm -hmm. so. That makes sense not to know who you are, especially because both parents mm -hmm. were Absent. a piece of who right. you are. Mm -hmm. And so when you don't have the people that made you, it makes you feel like you're empty. Absolutely. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. And I mean, I think that's even still a journey that I'm still having to heal on. Like my birthday was this past week. And while my father sent me a text message, happy birthday. That's the only thing I ever get from you is my happy birthday text. Then my mother sends me another text message, but wishes me happy birthday, happy 33rd birthday. And I'm like, I'm 32. So it's like still, my own parents don't even know who I am still. Like, <laughs> like you don't know my age and you don't even know me. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like I just gotta find who I am. We myself. laugh because you know we have learned to just turn all of our pain into the laughter. laughter. So like, don't because think I'm laughing at you. I know. I'm laughing I'm at laughing. you. That's my mechanism. Yeah, yeah. We have <laughs> I just know. totally learned to like not cry about everything anymore. But uh, because that's hurtful. Even listening yeah, to you say absolutely. that, I don't believe my dad knows how old I am. He don't even really text or call on our birthdays you know what i'm saying he's more like we see him when we see him and it's only usually at family functions you know what i'm saying so i don't believe he knows how old i am either you know what i'm saying sometimes i felt like he used to get us mixed up you know names because there were so many but i i really feel that way you know what i'm saying he used to get us mixed up but I laugh at that because it's so true yeah. that you know not only do you may you may not know who you are but your parents don't really know you because he would he'd be like hey baby girl i'm like baby girl who's baby girl <laughs> like you don't know me like that i don't even call you dad you know what i'm saying so like how am i your baby girl you know what i'm saying that's more like an emotional connection that you have with someone for them to call you baby girl so how are you calling me baby girl and you don't know nothing about me you don't even know my favorite color you know what I'm saying? So, but they have to call you a nickname because they don't know who you are. Girl, you oh, hit it right on the nail. He came, or yeah, he you don't even know my name. So, it's like you I know, said, how they act is how I don't want to say, Chevelle, Chevelle, Chevelle. Okay, I'm sorry about that. Um, 
play first of all happy belated birthday okay. yeah. <laughs> and then, <laughs> but um you know i i kind of like you know have like a little bit of a different side well like a lot bit different side of it because you know i have both of my parents in the home and both of them were pastors and so you know my whole life i was pretty much like kind of groomed to like continue this family legacy you know a lot of a lot of my family are in the ministry and all of that um and it wasn't until like you know, after like leaving my father's church, because my father is a, he is a spiritually abusive religious narcissist. And, um, and so I left his church and since leaving the church in 2019, I've just been trying to find who I mm -hmm. am, you know, who I am really not who I was groomed to be. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you, you talk about your dynamic of kind of like not knowing who you are because of the absence of your parents, <clears throat> you know, I had this you know, this contrast mm -hmm. of not knowing who I am because of the presence, presence of my of parents, us. you know. That's deep. <laughs> All right, so we got another con. Um, not understanding the roles when I became a parent and always feeling different. I think this was yours. Did I write that? Yeah, you got here. You, 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 well, yeah, you wrote <laughs> bubble hand right. <laughs> <laughs> and not having the roles present in your life. So that was a con for you. Yeah, because, you I mean, I really didn't on. know how to, like, Obviously, every parent learns how to be a parent in their first kid, but then it's like, am I doing this right? Because I've never even seen this modeled for me. Like, yeah, my friends, I've seen their parents, but is this really how I'm supposed to be as a parent? So I guess really that I was able to form like my own version of parenting and what works and what I don't want to happen to my kids is what happened to me. You so, know what happened to me? I just decided I didn't want kids. I, I, I was I was like that for the longest, I want, I for, sure. I mean, yeah. for sure. I kind of think about it now, but I'm still like, I don't right. know, because I don't really want that responsibility. responsibility. I don't want the responsibility. <laughs> I, not everyone's meant to be a parent. I, I, okay? I, I think mine, mine <laughs> I'm was being honest. as well. Yeah. Mine was delayed as well. I was 28 when I started having children, and I was blessed with uh, twins, a little boy and a little girl. Oh, They're Jesus. 11 now. Um, so I started late too, but I think a lot of it was because of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's like that you're not real sure if you're going to be a great daddy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's crazy because lack of having a, a, a father in your life, it makes you, because you're a good person, it makes you question if you have the capability because that stuff falls in your DNA mm -hmm. and you know it makes you question whether or not you're going to be a good daddy you know but um the more you learn yourself the more you understand that regardless of who was not there I can still be a phenomenal father for my child or but children. You, but you have to get to that point, though. That, that doesn't just come overnight. Mm -hmm. I was yeah. 28. They got it. They got it. But see, a lot of guys go out here and they just have kids. They just, it's an accident. Oh, oh, she's pregnant. You know what I'm saying? And they have to take on that role. But like a female, you know, for me, it was just like more of, I already raised my kids, I felt like. Like my, little, my younger siblings, like, you know, my mama raised us, but she needed help. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So... I feel like I already had my kids, so it wasn't more of a coming from a selfish standpoint of I didn't know if I could raise them. I already raised them. Look at them. She's sitting right there. You know yeah, what I'm saying? So, you did a good job. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. You know, that's all I wanted, pound the bag. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just to have my own was just a thought process of, dang, I will have less of this and this and this. Not going to make my mind went selfish because yeah. I had to give up a lot of things at a younger, you know what I'm saying, as, okay. as, as a result of that. But so yeah. you're questioning it, you know, and probably all of us probably questioned it on the panel, you know, if we would be a good parent, could we provide what Absolutely. we didn't have or, yeah. you know, I think that's already a step in the right mm -hmm. direction. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just having yeah. that conscious thought of, yeah. you know, is this going to work? How am I going to do that? You know, um, <clears throat> kind of like what you were saying though, is like not having that role there to show you. I find myself in my household, like, checking Chris, I'm like, did you tell CJ this? Did you tell him that? Because you didn't, somebody, the dad needs to tell him this. You know what I'm saying? They I'm respond like, differently. Yeah, they respond differently. For sure. For sure, for yeah. sure they do. And I'm like, you know, hey, go get him because this need to get done. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because moms, we are, some moms are just nourishing and, you know, they just love on their kids. And then you have some moms who I grew up with. She had to nourish, love, discipline, Absolutely. do all the things. So sometimes I find myself trying to do it all. And 
I have a husband. I don't need to do it all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so that also can affect your marriage because he was like, why are you telling me what to do? I, I know what I need to do. <laughs> I'm like, you ain't doing it fast enough for me. Go get him. <laughs> so I think that not having that um, role model there or not having, you know, someone to show you these things because like, Having your mom there, you know how to wash the dishes. You know how to separate your clothes. Absolutely. You know how to put this season on that, put that Absolutely. in the pot. You know, you learn all those things, but there's just so many things. And you don't really think about it, but there's a lot that a dad is supposed to teach you. Yes, right? it it's a lot that they're supposed to teach yes, you. Like, I learned how to drive a car with my cousin, Didi. We used to, he used to let me drive his car when we were, I was probably like 14, 15, because he was 16 then. Your dad's supposed to teach you how to drive a car. Our nerves are better than y'all. Yes. <laughs> oh, you know, I'm not getting to call no mama. Oh, no, 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 no. All she want to do is holler. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Make Dads nervous. are more calm. They yeah, have, they are, right. They're more patient with things like that. Um, so there's just, like, if you really think about it, there's just so much that you needed a dad to role model for you. Yeah. And then you, you just be like, dang, you know. Two heads are better than one. Two incomes are better than one, et cetera. Is that you? Yeah, okay. which, you know, is pretty much what you just said. You don't have to do it all when, you know, there's the two of you there. Mm -hmm. So you can have a bit more balance, you know. Of course, like nowadays, you have to have two incomes to kind of like yes, live and yeah. have a good life. Yes, but, you, yeah. you know, it just, it, it provides that balance. And so, you know, that that was my, you know, major thing. Yeah. So was that like a driving force into you educating and making sure that you always had money with the fact that you had the things that you needed? I want to know. Like, I wouldn't necessarily say that I had the things that I needed. You didn't have the like you I. Okay, so like even though I listed that as a pro, <laughs> okay, well, doesn't what? mean that that's how I grew up. Okay, okay, because um, you know, my father was kind of like a hustle man, you know, like and and I think that one of his hustles was being a pastor. You know, he did car salesman stuff, you know, um, all kind of stuff, you know, but they were like hustles. And, but my mom is the one who always held down a job. She was going to school and, you know, working. She's a nurse, you know. So she was the one that I saw, like, actually having the structure as far as, like, income and the bills and all of that stuff, mm -hmm. you know. And, I, and what I witnessed is that my father was more of the spender. Mm -hmm. um, so I wouldn't necessarily say that I had balance, but I believe that balance is a pro That's of having probably. two parents. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I just have to ask. You can edit this if you want to. I'm bad. <laughs> Lord. You didn't get no good stuff from your dad? Like, I, I, I don't mean to be sound, like, criticizing you, but it's just like, you know, you said that he's a narcissist. That's a, that's a strong word. You know what I'm saying? Even though, like, my dad wasn't in my life later on when he did, when we, I was old enough to decide to have a relationship with him, I did find some... Some things that I, I loved and that, you know, I'm like, okay, because he was a drug addict, there was a lot of things that just, he couldn't, there was just, that's another story. But there were just some things that, you know, kept him from doing certain things. So, but he can work on cars. So when I did have an issue, like I called him and he was able to do that thing for me. So I'm just like, she had her daddy. You didn't find nothing good out of your dad? Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Like, you know, there are pros and cons <laughs> to, you know, everything. Yeah. And But I think the major thing with me, like, when I talk about it is that the good things that he did was really overshadowed mm -hmm. because of the mm -hmm. manipulation, okay. because of the violence, you know, because of his intentions, you know. So, like, you know, there was a there's a lot of people in the church that he blessed, you know. Um, he always made sure I had cars, you know. But my very first car that I got from him, um, he didn't come to my graduation, you know, like he didn't come to my high school graduation because he wanted to go to a car auction and so he gave me a car as a consolation you know so it's like i got a car but i really just wanted you to be there you know so it was it's like a lot of the good things that he did was also overshadowed because of his intention and because mm -hmm. of um and because it was manipulation and i guess i guess i still kind of think to myself though um 
not having a dad, I don't know. I, I still don't know think if I that, want that, one. That, I, I, I'm like, that. well, you, well, it's not crazy. that I don't like, want really one. Like, like, what, what kind know? of man <laughs> would I be if I did have him? You know right. Right? Yeah. Dude, I probably right. would be like a totally different person. Yeah. Well, or or I'm just saying. What I was getting at is like, okay, well, I would have accepted the car too. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I, accepted it. I guess what I'm saying is like, you know, like not having a dad at all, you got some some things. Like, okay, well, okay, he did choose to go to the car because maybe he felt like that's what he needed to do. You know what I'm saying? Graduation is a very important thing, but maybe that's what he felt like he needed to do. You know what I'm saying? But you got a car. You know that I, I guess I'm just trying to figure. I'm just trying I to feel see. Like nothing, nothing your, is yours more is important. because you had nothing, we, we, nothing at all. Yeah. She had something, but I think her in her defense, maybe he was present, but was he actually present? Right, yeah. that's the thing. I would have rather for you to come to my graduation than get me a car. So we 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 uh-huh. live life off of experience. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. And so you're saying like, well, at least you got something. Yeah, yeah. Like, to the, mom, she her, she her. yeah. You know, and he then her, she's so used to having that. Yeah, the the intimate stuff that she was desiring, he was not able to give because he thought what he was doing was enough. Right. Then it goes back to this: we are humans, and we we learn what we see. And yeah. I'm I don't even know your <laughs> your family's dynamic, but I'm pretty sure he was taught that. Yeah. Yeah, right. I mean, he didn't, and his he didn't level have of his how his life. Yeah. the level of how he was is how he's going to be with his children. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's not. I mean, I'm unless not you, you have know, a relationship with God, like that's just, a, that's a thing too that we hadn't talked about yet either. Yeah. Like having yeah. a true relationship with God, having your own relationship with God, not having a relationship with God because your your parents forced it on you. Rather, it's a single parent home or a double, double parent, home, yeah. like. Do you have a, a sturdy, sustainable Foundation. relationship mm-hmm. with God? Yeah. What you have to ask them is, did they have an example that would show them how to have a sturdy relationship with God? See, you my can try to have one it as manipulation. Mm-hmm. He used that to mm-hmm. to manipulate people, to get things from people. That's crazy. You know, so it wasn't, you know, even though it was there, we were always in church, you yeah. know, so that's the pro. But the con is, like you said, it was his hustle. Yeah, yeah. like it wasn't that's real. Really, that's that's very, very, very interesting. That's, that's very, very interesting. And you know the difference. Like you can, you can fake with the sheep, but when you come back to the coop, we oh, already yeah. know how you are. We know, <laughs> we know how you are. <laughs> like because you, you leave the church the and you cussing, you know, and, and right. cussing about the, you know, the saints in the church and talking about people and you know doing all the things, you right. know. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, you went and you served and people looked up to you and maybe, and you helped people, you know, but it's like, you put your heart wasn't right. right. Your intentions weren't good. You yeah. use people too. And not everybody's better after they interacted with you. Yeah. So, you know. Okay. All right. So I'm going to read another con. Not having what I thought I needed. This one was mine. I feel like being in a single parent home, you know, I didn't have the things that I needed. Like... The time, and because I had a big family, I got a lot of siblings, you know what I'm saying? So for me, that was a con because, like, now I'm just now getting the things that I need. Mm-hmm. And I really felt like if I had a two parent home, like you said, it, it would be, you know, even, you know what I'm saying? You would have it. So that's why I think it's a con. Yeah, not having the things that you need is, and that is a con. Uh, I mean, you mean material things or you need emotional? Just a lot of you stuff, just mean like somebody to teach me how to do this or that. Yeah. You know, support. Yeah. But not just that, support for your mom. I'm sure there's a lot that y'all witnessed that she maybe could have took that light load off if she would have had help. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand while, yes, you can separate from a relationship, your kids can get older, but I truly believe stress and trauma is your number one killer. Yeah. 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 People harbor stuff, people hide stuff. Like, I used to never understand until I became a parent, like, why is my grandma in that shower so long? Like, I thought, you know, why is she just taking a bath so long? Nine times out of ten, she was probably in there doing the same thing I was. That was my only time to just cry it out and no one know yep. what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get out same and here. I'm back being mama. Same here. Like, same here. You cry in the shower? Oh, yeah. There was oh, just, man. I think that's oh, yeah. the thing, everybody. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. That's the safest place, too. 
So, yeah. girl, I just cry anywhere. I don't care. Well, I'm, 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 I'm an any, anywhere cry. If I, I want to get my emotions out, they going to come out. Sorry. I, had I feel like you can cry a little girl, louder. Girl, because that shit, I be having moments there sometimes. I be having moments here. I feel like you can cry louder in the shower while you're in your car, too. You know what I'm saying? Like by yourself. No, I see him. I cry him cry my car. You cry your car? <laughs> okay, yeah, oh, she is. She is a cry. Hey, I'm a cry too. Hey. You know, I'm very emotional. Like seeing her cry will make me cry. Don't you start crying. I ain't hey, gonna no. cry. You <laughs> want to cry? <laughs> but why did you get so emotional? Like, because bro, I just started thinking about like not having the stuff that I that I needed, mm-hmm. not that I wanted the things that I needed. Mm-hmm. You know, that's. I'm gonna talk about. You need to talk about it. This may help somebody. Not like just yeah. that. Maybe the person yeah, that needs to know it can hear it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think so many times I've cried out to my parents and told them exactly how I felt. Why you can't go back and fix what you did? You're still here. You're still alive. Like why can't we go forward? But the fact that y'all still ain't like, showing up for me, like you just ain't showing up for me. You ain't showing up for my kids now. Like so, it's just. I mean, I don't know. Sometimes I, I, I know God makes no mistake. I know God's plan is always better. But sometimes I'm like. You really wanted them people to be parents. Like, right. Like, why the hell? Like, <laughs> them people, like. It make you question it. Like, for real. But then I also realized, too, if I continued on my spiritual journey, regardless of who's there for me or not, my biggest father is always going to be there. That's true. Yeah. So while I may not have had those things growing up, obviously I'm here for a reason. Yeah. yeah. And he was always, he's, he will forever be with me. True. So. Absolutely. Yeah, true, 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 true. I sometimes think things that are not there for you that we think we won't need. Maybe it was a protection all along. That's, that's so probably. True. And see, that's so true. our our number one parent, like you said, is never mm. going to leave us. So he's going to always be protecting us. So even when the person that's supposed to do what they're supposed to do, he's going to make sure that you're okay, mm-hmm. right? And so we are on this panel today and we are some strong people mm-hmm. with a lot of testimony you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. but at the same time like our strength because of who we are in god has made us be what we are today that's true and we true. can sit here and have uh open conversation with each other coming from different backgrounds uh different genders um and come as one i mean that's yeah. powerful yeah. that is powerful yeah, buddy. Yeah, well and she over there crying. Oh, <laughs> oh well. Okay, this is a con. It says if your parents aren't happy with each other, could be painful to witness that dynamic. Did I read that, that right? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> well, you know, like I said, my my father was abusive. And, you know, I would witness, you know, abuse against my mother. And, um, oh, yeah. Yeah. It, and, and she's like the, one of those, the types that will, you know, always put on a, a good face, you uh-huh. know, like, you know, it's all Sweet good. Spirit. God is, you know, in control, you know, but you would, but I would still see, like, you know, her doing a lot and, and still taking abuse. And, you know, and I just, I mean, I was one of those that wanted my mother to leave my father. I mean, I, I wanted her to. I was like, God, please leave him, you know, because I just saw how he was really, like, devastating her, aging her, you know, and I would see my mom going through that decline, you know. Yeah. So, you know, having them together was like, you know, like I said, there's pros and cons to everything, which is, mm-hmm. you know, why you all chose to do it this way, yeah. to do the panel this way, you know, but... I could, I would still see that dynamic, and it just Damn. wasn't good. Do you, you have brothers? Mm-hmm. Four, okay. four, and y'all never beat y'all daddy up. True story, y'all. I you know, like straight up, though. Like true story, though. We'll jump in. We jump. We, we, they, we fought. Our, we fought our daddy. I mean, I was little, but. Mm-hmm. They would. They fought our daddy because, for real, <laughs> you don't mess up. I told you, right, like he, he, he's right. a right. religious narcissist. Oh, yeah. So yeah. you have to remember, like he's the one that's like, you know, touch not my anointed, do my prophets no harm. You know, twisting scriptures. Yeah, okay. You know, and then there's scriptures about you know how your children are supposed to be to your parents. You know, and stuff like that. So, 
um, no, no, they yeah. never, they never did. Now I yeah. tried to poison him. <laughs> Said my brother. I did try to We're get all day. I did. It didn't work. It didn't work, but I did try. You know, this, yeah. that's real. That's real that's talk. Real shit, though. Okay, that's I'll real talk. Because our, our brother got mad at our mom one time and put dish detergent in her soda. Because <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it, he wanted it. Was it a root beer? No, it was cream soda. Cream soda. She used to make him walk to the store to get cream soda. He asked, Can he have some? And she was like, No. He <laughs> <laughs> he said he squeezed that thing hard. <laughs> and mom she was wow. like, oh, well, she, she was like, This something's wrong. This made him go back to the store to get another one. That's what he get into the beer. For real. But he was oh, bad, y'all. Now he was bad. Oh, my mom, you know, she didn't do nothing to him, but he was just bad. But that's real thought, though. Yeah. Like it could push a child to that state where they feel like they want to harm their parent, and that's that's a totally never, you know different story because that's mental. But that is funny that you said that. Especially but I really when you're getting that love from the parent that you need, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. You're to protect them. Yeah. It's just like. She's giving me what I need. Why are you trying to take her? her? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. for sure. I see. My father did try to kill my mother. Ooh. This was after you know all of us had moved out and all of that, but um, which is you know right around the time when I left the church and um, and so you know and I excuse me and I ended up you know discovering that you know and um, so that was devastating. Which is why I just cut him off completely. I have not yeah. spoken to my father in years now and mm. I refuse to have a relationship with him. Does yeah. that hurt you? That you to haven't? not have? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. And, you know, he's on social media and, you know, so am I. You know, I've been speaking out about my experience. I wrote a whole book, you know. Mm. Yeah. But that still doesn't, like, it, it still doesn't, like, do anything to you me. Don't do it, it, like, it has no impact. You no, it, has, it has no impact on him, you know, <laughs> which is like, you know, it, to me, it speaks to rejection of me. You know, that's how it did because it's like, I know what you did. You know, I know what you've done. I, you know, I, I even wrote about it. And you still, you know, don't feel any need to change. And you're in the very industry where change is welcomed. You know, it's like that that could be your testimony, but you still won't do it. You still, you know, yeah. are fake. Right? Do you feel like... You could have gone to him, and I'm not sure if you have, Mm -hmm. you know, could you have gone to him and said to him, these are the things that happened to me as a child that I feel like were absolutely inappropriate, Mm -hmm. and maybe talk to him before you wrote the book or before you went to, you know, social media to tell, tell the story? Yeah, this was a, this was a very last resort, you know, um, I even, we, I grew up in Germany and, um, you know, my father was very violent even there. And um, I reported him for child abuse. And my youngest brother and I, we were removed from my parents' home. We were put okay. in a German foster home. Um, and so, you know, it's not, it wasn't the first time I've always, I've always been the one who was outspoken, which, you know, mm. I really felt like he hated me because of that, you know. Right. Um, but it was like the, the dynamic be- with us is like because I was the girl, only girl, the violence that he inflicted on me was much different than my brothers. I mean, my brothers were beat. You know, yeah. like mm-hmm. with things, with a rifle, with, you know. Jesus. Yeah. And so um, they were hung and beat, you know, and it just all kind of stuff. But I was the one who spoke out. And I just like, I can't, you know, I have to be the voice for, you know, for my brothers. You know, I have to, you know, speak up on my mom and be someone that she can come to, you know. And so when she left my father, she called me, you know, and, you know, I was the one who was able to. Help her get away. So, <clears throat> I know this is going off the subject, but you were so interesting to me. I just need to know, what did you want to come of it? Because, like, I have addressed my dad multiple times. Like, you know, when stuff happens, now that I'm able to have this really, uh, like relationship with him on my terms as an adult, I've gone to him, I'm like, you know, this pissed me off. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you could have did this, did that better. You know what I'm saying? And I allow him to either reconcile or fix the situation you know so what did you want to come of the book yeah the book and or even just your from the start because i know i first saw you on social media Mm -hmm. you know well the book was more healing for me um you know before i left the church um i had this 
you know, God gave me this idea, you know, to record my father. And so I started recording him. And that's where I really like uncovered a lot of the stuff that was going on. And then I convinced my mom to do the same thing. And so she started recording him as well. And that's where we uncovered this plot that he had to kill her. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, coming out with the book was more like, I have to release this because, you know, I've, I've been the pastor's daughter. You know, I'm the one that makes him look good, makes him look like he's a good father. You know, I mean, look at me. You know, you wouldn't think that anything ever happened. You know, I sit in church, I sing, you know, I was a praise and worship leader. And, um, you know, and so I made him look good, made him look valid. And but it wasn't real. Mm -hmm. And so it was more like just what I needed to do. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there are steps that I feel like he should have taken. And one would be to shut the church down. He should not still be pastoring. He should not be on social media spreading this message that isn't real, you know, or using God to manipulate and control people. Yeah. That's first of all. Shut yeah. it down. Yeah. You're okay. not qualified to be a preacher. She said it. She passed the dog. Read yours, child. All right, we're going to do the pro of uh, last two. <laughs> face reality quicker. This one's mine. I feel like that was a pro for me because I was, at a young age, I knew that I was literally all I had. So I knew that whatever I made of my life, that's what it was going to be. So I think that's a pro. Because a lot of people, they have people that take care of them most of their whole lives, right? And they don't really know what the real world is like. But I was in the real world at 11, 12 years old, you know? So I feel like it's a pro. I think mine kind of piggybacks off of yours. Mine is, this is my my last one too. It was, um, I seen what it takes to be a good parent no matter what the situation. You know, I mm -hmm. felt like no matter what mom had going on, no matter if it was working two or three jobs, no matter if it was when she had to move from Boston here or whatever the case may be, she showed us that strength is, I mean, like that's who she was. She was a strong person. And so I feel like that's where I get a lot of my strength from is just seeing her persevere and just, you know, continue to do what she needed to do to take care of her children because it was a lot of us. You know, I'm one of, I'm one of five, but my mom, my dad has eight. But, you know what I'm saying, there's a lot of us, and it took a lot of strength, and I feel like I just learned to just, you know, hey, this is what it takes, what you got to do. Right. So. Kids are very resilient, mm -hmm. you know, very resilient and really forgiving. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so even when we make mistakes, you know, they, you know, as long as we change our lives, you know, as long as we be we're present and you know showing that we're trying to change that you know even if they have to bring to us you know what we messed up on you know i think that you know we all have a desire to really like change and be the people that we need to be for our children i think that speaks to the resilience of both of you mm -hmm. you know to say i'm going to take you know what good i can from these situations and and let that be a pro for me yeah. you know yeah 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 well this has been the episode well i think this was our first episode first episode. first episode of talk less listen more i do a lot of talking <laughs> <laughs> not a lot of listeners we're gonna learn with the other but i do want to thank you guys for coming and being a guest um this really means a lot to me you guys all know about my movie that i'm trying to make um experience to teach don't just learn and you know this is the first step towards it you know getting together and having these conversations that are hard to have you know and I want to say thank you guys for all for coming. Thanks, Tune in to the next episode. Till then.